from Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of Yeah. Mastermind. I'm not a rapper, I'm more like a reverend. Preach. And we are not enemies, I am your brethren. The path that I'm on got me going a different direction. It's all a perception, I'm looking at things from another dimension. You people worship that presidents, ain't got no dividends. You and your friends, y'all are just playing pretend. The Bible is life, I suggest that you open and read it. The truth is the truth, and the truth is that you really need it. I'm addicted to Jesus, without him I feel like I'm fiending. God is not dead, he's alive, and it's time to believe it. People keep telling me they don't want nothing to do with religion. The choices of heaven and hell, you better make a decision. The life that you're living determines the price of admission. Will you bow to the villain or the one who was risen? Huh? There is freedom in Christ if you ask for forgiveness. And then the book of life is where your name will be written forever. I can't help it, I can't help it, I can't help it. This is who I am, this is who I am. This is who I am. Said it ain't my fault, it ain't my fault. To deny God. deny God, yeah, yeah. But I put him first, and that's how I defy odds. Defy, defy odds. Prosperity pastors make Christians look like certified frauds. Do you honestly think that your money can buy God? Huh? Some do it all for the money, others just want to be famous. I do it all for the king, I would much rather be famous. To the ends of the earth, I will go till they know what his name is. Despite what I'm faced with, I know I'm destined for greatness. They're calling me crazy like I have just left the asylum. Whether you love it or hate it, man, this is who I am. The devil is out on the prowl like a devouring lion. Every day is a battle, but I will continue to fight him. I'm strapped with the Bible I put on my armor. To Jesus, I give all the praise and the honor. Honor, honor. I'm a Jesus freak, but don't call me a monster. I would die for this gospel, so call me a martyr. I can't help it, I can't help it. All right, y'all. All right. We just want to say praise the Lord to all of you tonight that is listening in to the Angels of Melody International with your host on tonight, Miss Angel on deck right here on Worship Center Radio. And we just thank God for his many, many blessings. We want to give a special shout out to our brother Dave Vito in Jesus Creek. That's the song that you heard uh, just now. I'm telling you, when I first heard that song, I thank God for our guest on tonight because it was through her um how we was able to how I was able to even connect uh with him 
and watching the video and really uh, the song was a blessing. And I just went on and just let him know and let her know that it will air live on the show. And so we just thank the Lord that on last Thursday uh, we didn't get a chance to do the show, but we thank the Lord that tonight um, it happened. And so we just want to say once again, God bless you, Davido. We thank God for your life, and we look forward to having you on uh, the show soon as well. And so um, on tonight, we want to give a shout-out to Dr. Rodeberg, to Prophet Blaine, and, and our great DJ, Brother Juan Johnson. I thank God for them all. Um, they definitely rock. And uh, we just thank God for all of you all that are listening in uh, right now around the world. Um, it's just awesome. Uh, to be able to have an, uh, another day of life, health, and strength. A lot of people are dying and leaving here, but we thank God that we are still yet uh, have the action of our limbs and that we are breathing life on tonight. And also I want to give a shout-out to uh, the founders, our brother and sister uh, Johnny and Ellison Frazier of the Tell Us Your Testimony um, because uh, our sister that we have on tonight with us is how I got connected through that great page. A lot of y'all know that even sometime last year it got started where um, I do a variety of shows, but sometimes I go on that page and God will lead me who to get. And I've gotten, we've gotten plenty of people uh, from that great page. I'm telling y'all, if you don't know about it, go on there. It's called Tell Us Your Testimony, and there's three sevens behind it. And I'm telling you, it's a page of great prayer, testimonies. It's just awesome. And so we thank God. Also, I want to give a shout-out to my family there in Saginaw, Michigan. We want to give a shout-out to Transparent the Band, y'all. We want to say we love y'all so much. They post of a post that caught me off guard. <laughs> Today, I was on the Facebook, and I just happened to look and saw my picture, and it was saying, you know, um, special thanks to me for uh, being a part of um, Transparent the Band and being there to help support and everything. And so just right here around the world, I just want to say God bless you all. I'm so honored. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, it caught me by surprise. I wasn't even looking for that, you know. And so, um, but we just thank God, a, a great group of men and women of God there in Saginaw. And so we just thank God. Uh, for them on tonight. So I just want to say God bless to all of y'all and Transparent the Band, Dante and Sherelle. I love all of y'all so much. And so now we're going to get started on this great uh, program on this evening. We thank God for our sister uh, Tyra uh, Walters there in Florida. And I'm telling y'all, she has a very powerful testimony that she's going to share with you on tonight. Uh, God bless you, sister. How are you? I'm great. How are you, sister? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good and blessed. Good. Well, good Lord. Won't he do it, though? Yes, that's right. He sure will do it. <laughs> that's right. That I'm is, that telling is you, just how all this is ordained, it just, he never ceases to amaze me. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, how you found me on that page, which, by the way, that page has blessed my heart every day. I'm seeing testimonies that you know, either bring me to tears or have me, you know, praising God in the middle of work. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just so thankful for that page. And, um, you know, I, the day that I wrote that testimony that you found, it was just a day that I was really depressed and I just felt like, you know, I need to get this out there once and for all because I know that I have something to share with people. I mean, I've, people have always told me, you know, I should write a book. I do writing, you know, that's my thing. That's the talent that the Lord has blessed me with. Mm. And um, I, you know, have always wrote, like, poems and things like that. That was, like, my talent event. So uh, when I wrote this I testimony... I think we, we are echoing here. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> I'm hearing the oh, echo. Yeah. I don't know if you're hearing it. Okay. It sounds I, I kind of did hear it a little bit. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You can continue. All right. Yeah, so I wrote the testimony um, just to get it out because, you know, I, I I hold in a lot because I try to lift up a lot of other people in the Lord, and, you know, I just try to li live as an example um, just because of where I came from. Like, mm -hmm. I, I live in the same hometown that I grew up in. 
I, mm. I, I know a lot of people around here, and they know me, and they know the old me. Mm. Um, so it's kind of hard, you know, a lot of people when they get out of here, so to speak, because it seems like everybody always want to get out of here, run away from, uh, you know, whatever. By the way, this is Titusville, Florida, just, you know, giving a shout out on the map. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, but I learned a long time ago that, you know, you can't run away from your problems. You know, all it is is uh, what I call ge uh, geological uh, treatment, not mm -hmm. a cure, just a geological treatment. Yeah. Because you can get away and have a fresh start and everything and um you know, it's only temporary until you find what what you were into wherever you ran from. Mhm. Mm so, um but anyways, um my testimony basically starts from when I was younger. Um you know, I have an alcoholic father. Um mm -hmm. so I became an alcoholic when I was 14 years old. I mean, yeah. they say it's in your blood, it's hereditary or whatever, a disease. But, you know, m my God heals heals diseases. So, you know, I don't call myself really an alcoholic anymore. Um, like they say, you know, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, once an addict, always an addict. But um, I, I feel like, you know, I've been delivered. And, um, you know, the good Lord Almighty delivered me. Through the blood of Jesus, you know, all of my sins are forgiven, and I just thank him so much for that every day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when I was 14, you know, my, my parents pretty much allowed allowed it to happen. Um, you know, my mom condoned it. My dad even encouraged it, really. Um, you know, we used to party together a lot, and that's all I really remember. I mean, I had a good childhood. My dad worked hard and everything provided for us. Uh, my mom did everything for us all the time, but it was just like a party atmosphere on the weekends all the time. Not at my house necessarily, but within the family. Mm. So, you know, I come from a long line of alcoholics on both sides of my family. But, um, you know, I can't blame them, however, you know, for my wrong choices and rebellion. Um, most of the things that happened to me, I brought on myself. I take full responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, with the devil's influence, and um, I've, I've totaled mo multiple vehicles in what should have been fatal accidents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually two of the same make, same model, same color, everything. I, I totaled uh, like two years apart from each other when I was a teenager, and uh the first one, they said, if I if I was wearing my seatbelt, mm -hmm. I would have been killed oh, because, wow. like, I got T-boned and it, the impact knocked me over into the passenger side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'd have been stuck in that seatbelt, they said, you know, I'd have been killed. And wow. it was just a miracle how, you know, I survived that. Mm -hmm. And then not only two years later, you know, I totaled another vehicle um, with, in, like, a head-on collision into a tree uh, because mm -hmm. I was withdrawn from drugs and just, you know, trying to get to my next high. And, um, you know, I, I looked up, and next thing I know, I'm going into a tree. Wow. But, yeah, so, I mean, that one knocked me unconscious for hours, and no one even found me. Like, I woke up on my own. Mm -hmm. and just covered in blood and ran up to the neighbor's house. And, you know, I don't really remember much after that. But I just know that they told me that if I wouldn't have been wearing my seatbelt in that one, then I would have got, I would have went through the windshield. Wow. You know, so things like that, you know, it just, they've, it always has stuck out to me that God has something for me, that he's kept me here oh, for yeah. a reason, you know. And, like, I'd be sitting in the hospital bed just at at an adolescent just wondering, like, what is that reason, you know? What has he got me here for? Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time, you know, I'm so, like, influenced by other people and, you know, just wanting to do my own thing and not caring about nobody but myself. And, you know, I was just out there wild, real mm -hmm. wild, sis. I mean, my drugs of choice, you know, were, like, cocaine, marijuana, Xanax, among other substitutions, you know, like shrooms, acid, painkillers, X, ecstasy. Mm. You know, and I used all this regularly through my adolescent up until, you know, I was older to 
So, you know, I finally really dedicated my life to God. Yeah. And that was when, you know, that was years later. But, I mean, I was a, a dancer, a stripper, all the way, you know, here in Florida to mm-hmm. Atlanta. I was in Atlanta for, you know, some time dancing in all the clubs there. And just, you know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, in those atmospheres. You know, that's literally the devil's playground. You know, yeah. selling lust and drugs and just feeding addictions everywhere and, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was just, it was just, uh, you know, I always had that feeling like I'm not supposed to be in here. Yeah. I've even had people tell me, like, what are you doing here? Wow. Like, I'd literally be wearing, like, a cross necklace, not really knowing what it represents at that time, but mm-hmm. my mom had given it to me. Mm. I mean, I wasn't raised in the church or anything like that, but she always, you know, would tell us things about God here and there, and, you know, she gave us our little cross necklaces, you know. Mm. And um, so I'd be in the in the strip club dancing with a cross necklace and just, you know, totally disrespecting my Lord. But um, I feel like that cross, you know, I, I, I don't want to, like, say that I idolized the cross, like, it protected me, but... I just think it might have sent, like, a vibe to certain people to, you know, kind of back off because I could have been in some crazy situations, you know. Yeah. I mean, but I've been delivered from, you know, promiscuity, bisexuality, you know. Um, I used to think that stuff was cute. Mm. Um, But, you know, so finally I hit rock bottom and I joined the Army in 2006 Mm. after I was... uh, sexually assaulted by someone I actually trusted here in Florida. Yeah. And, you know, this sexual assault was, like, something that all of my friends, like, didn't believe. You know, people would tell me it was my fault. You know, the whole, the stereotypical story of, you know, if you get sexually assaulted or raped or whatever, you know, people say it was your fault. Well, I I didn't believe that that really happened, but, you know, I really had people saying, you know, I was at the wrong place. I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have been doing Mm -hmm. what I I was doing. And so I felt really alone, and um, I just needed a huge, drastic change. I mean, something like, (laughs) something like from stilettos to combat boots. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I'd be up at 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning at the strip club, you know, still up on drugs and stuff. Mm. And then, like, it feels like a couple weeks later, I was up at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning running, smiles. <laughs> and combat like, boots, because you definitely can't run in no stiletto. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm just looking up at the sky, like, Lord, what am I doing here? You know, like, what am I doing? I'm running at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's freezing. I was at Fort Jackson in South Carolina in basic training. But you know what? He knew what he was doing because, you know, with that transition from civilian to military and, Mm -hmm. you know, suffering from that um, sexual assault. And, you know, by the way, which I, like, relive that, like, every three months because in the Army, you know, they do sexual assault briefings. Okay. Just because, you know, that's a that's a rampant thing in the military, too, that they keep hush-hush. Mm. You know, like, there's a lot of um, sexual assault amongst the soldiers, you know, and it's always brushed under the rug, and I just felt like, you know, the Spirit led me right now to bring that to the light. Yes. Because there's a lot of women out there suffering from that. Um, but, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'd be reliving this experience when they're going over it, you know, every three months. And mm-hmm. It was just, it was a hard, rough transition, but, you know, um, I just, you know, on, on Sunday, on Sundays, they said, you know, you can scrub the barracks with a toothbrush or you can go to church. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> You know, I decided I'm I'm going to take that uphill march and go ahead and go to church. <laughs> and, um... So I went to church, right, and there was this young, modern, biracial preacher who, like, really inspired me. Like, I even witnessed, like, what's called a nimbus, yeah, which is, like, like a shining over over someone's head, like you may mm-hmm. have seen in, like, illustrations of mm-hmm. 
you know, biblical illustration. Like, this is before I knew anything about, you know, God or the Bible or anything, you know. Mm-hmm. But I witnessed that. Like, I was just like an illumination for him. Like, like I just listened to him, and, you know, he inspired me to get saved. And Well, I mean, Jesus Christ through him inspired me to get saved. And um, so I was saved in, in basic training at Fort Jackson, and that was actually... Ten years ago in May. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, and and since then, you know, it, it, I may have backslid a lot since then, but I know that's when my journey truly began. You know, mm-hmm. I I didn't really understand like what it meant to be saved, but I was saved and I was baptized, and it was um, you know, I didn't feel any different, mm-hmm. and I. But I know that's when the good work in me began. And but not to mention that God was with me all those other times before I was saved. I mean, he's always been with me, sparing yeah. me, you know, wow. sparing my life and sending his angels to protect me. Like, yeah. I mean, I literally remember in that sexual assault that, you know, the angels came and touched each one of my senses when I came back to consciousness. And, like, I just remember that. You know, when I could look back on it, I know it was angels that touched me, that brought yeah. me back. That was another near-death experience. Like, I mean, I literally heard the people tell, saying what they were going to do with my body. Like, wow. they thought I was gone. Mm. But, um, so, you know, I I go to Korea, which is my first duty station, and that was a culture shock. I mean, mm-hmm. it was like night and day from over here to me, and my drinking intake tripled because there wasn't easy access to drugs, and, you know, so I'm still using in, in the military. Yeah. And um, I found myself in quite a few compromising situations in a different country, but, um, you know, God always had me back then, too. Um, you know, I, and, and believe it or not, you'll never believe this, but when I went over there to Korea, it was like three months after basic training because I, I went to Alabama to do some schooling uh, for an AIT in the Army, mm-hmm. and I was an ammunition specialist. So my first duty station over in Korea, I go to the smallest camp on the peninsula. It's called Camp Long, and I was on there. Uh, it's like just nobody even over there knows where it's at. It's just so small and, like, un, you know, country. So um, I'm walking around, you know, filling out the new place I'm at and everything. And um, I walk past the chapel. Mm -hmm. And I look at the sign, and the chapel sign says, um, Captain Kyle A. Taylor, which was the same chaplain who was over in basic training in South Carolina. And I had no idea he was going there or anything like that, you know. It was just like, I couldn't even hardly believe that it was the same one. I had to go in and see for myself. And Mm. that was like a God-ordained thing. Like, I felt like I was at the exact place where I was supposed to be at the exact right time. And just, you know, I felt so much peace. Like, so, of course, you know, that inspired me to go to church every Sunday. and just, But I was drinking and partying, you know, every Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I didn't get it at that time, but I was learning, and there was seeds being planted all the while. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, God has always been trying to talk to me, you know, through church signs especially. Like, I remember one of the days that, you know, I used to be um, dancing, and I'd be sta- I stayed up all night doing drugs or whatever, and then... You know, me and my friend went to the beach early that morning. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just remember going to the store by myself, just sitting there and looking around like, you know, like God, like calling out to God. And I, I don't even know him personally yet, but just like saying, God, you know, if you're real, just show me a sign. And you'll never believe, but whenever I, I took that girl home that day, like, mm-hmm. I drove past this sign, and, and, you know, he had been compelling me to look at signs all of, all everywhere I go, church signs. 
And I believe that's how the Holy Spirit started revealing himself to me. And um, the sign simply said, if you've been looking for a sign from God, this is it. Yeah. Just, I mean, just like that, like, like not even 10 minutes ago, I was calling out to God, asking him for a sign, and then just, boom, mm-hmm. there was that confirmation, like, I'm, I'm with you, you know? Yes. Well, That's awesome. anyway, you know, when I was at, um, in Korea, I was leaving to go on leave after a year of being there and then going to my next duty station, which was Fort Hood, Texas. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, by the way, that's where I met De- Dave Vito. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, we were battle buddies together and, um, that's where we met, but, um, you know, that, that pastor or chaplain, as we call it in the military, he, he prophesied to me, mm-hmm. you know, because I went to him and I was concerned. I was like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to fall back into my old ways when I get back to, you know, the States. Mm-hmm. And he said something along the lines of, you know, I was worried about going home and being around old friends and stuff like that, you know, and, and he said something along the lines of, you know, you need, and rather than being worried about going home, you know, that's going to pass quickly. But, you know, you know, you need to think about your next duty station and yeah. where you're going and, and your plan, you know, like find a good church and whatnot. Well, of course, I wasn't thinking nothing about, you know, church. That was like the last thing. I was just really focusing on getting back to the States and, um, and like, when I did go to Fort Hood, Texas, I promise you it wasn't even wasn't even two weeks I was there and I had a brand I had a brand new car and and I, I linked up with an old battle buddy and, and we just got tore up and I um wrecked that car right into a building. And I'm wow. talking about like it was wow. like fifty thousand dollars worth of damage and just, I mean, by the grace of God, I wasn't killed then either, you I know. I know, that's right. I mean, my car was completely totaled again, another totaled car, you know, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all probably thinking I'm a horrible driver, but <laughs> I think a lot of substance had to do with most of that. But, um, um, so, like, that was my first, like, run-in with the police. I basically, um, you know, got locked up for a DWI. Mm-hmm. And um, my parents bonded me out from from home, and you know I just lost my car. That's basically all that I learned out of that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then they made me an example because you know I'm a new private at a new duty station, and and that happens. So they would always like make me an example, you know, in the army and stuff. Like, don't mm-hmm. be like her, <laughs> basically. Uh, well, you know, you know, you know the the good thing about all of this is everything that you went through, it's like you, you didn't know that it was purpose. The same thing with me, I, you know, some of the things that I went through, like I know one thing we had in common was the dancing part because I did the same thing at the strip club. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I was born and raised, you know, coming up in the church because my dad is a preacher, you know, and mm-hmm. we have a family full of pastors and ministers and stuff. And so it was like... I, I knew, you know, uh, different things, but it was like I wanted to be the bad girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But isn't it something, though, sis, that we have done things in our past and we really didn't know that God really had a purpose for us? Isn't that mm-hmm. a blessing to know now? what we know now because then we wanted to do, even though we knew God was with us, like you said, you know, God was with you because it could have been worse. You know, you could have been dead. You know what I'm saying? Especially the encounter of you, like you were talking about the rape and you was hearing what they wanted to do to you, but they couldn't do what they wanted to do to you. You know what I'm saying? Even with the car wrecks, you could have went on. You know what I'm saying? But God spared your life. And so, I'm saying, like, it's a wonderful thing to know that even though we wasn't even paying attention to God back then and and we wasn't serving him and we was doing our own thing, but he knew that it was going to be, it was going to come a time to where it is now 
that we would that we would know him, uh, that we would live for him, and that we would do uh, the will of God. You know, it's something that we didn't know this back then. You know, and and uh, but look at us now. I mean, it's it, I know it has to be a wonderful feeling, even with you sharing this on the air tonight around the world. I know it has to be uh, uh, an awesome feeling. Oh, yeah. I mean, better than any high. That's for sure. And I know that, you know, God can turn around and take what Satan meant for harm and turn it around for good. And that's what he's proven to me. Yeah. You know, time and time again, off of my wrong choices. And, you know, he has definitely been proven faithful with that, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, I just thank him for that, really. And, you know, I, I wish it wouldn't have took as much backsliding and as much hard times, as much trouble I done brought upon myself that I really didn't have to go through. You know, he's always right there mm -hmm. knocking, waiting, yeah. you know, sending messengers your way and just, you know, giving you that grace before you even know what grace is. Oh, yeah. And I just thank him so much for grace because, you know, what grace is, undeserved favor, I definitely don't deserve to be here. I definitely don't deserve to, you know, just, you know, the penalty of sin is death. And if that's what, you know, I've gotten away with a lot more than what I'm telling you guys about, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. if that's the penalty, then, you know, I should definitely be dead. But yet, even with my near-death experiences, he still spared me. Yeah, and he just that's awesome. And he still just bestows blessings upon me, you know, and mm -hmm. my family and I, I just pray that people can open their eyes and see his blessings, you know, rather yes. than just expect things or complain about things or, you know, like just something as simple as like waking up and just being like, even if you don't feel good or whatever, you know, you could just be like, I'm going to have a good day regardless of what you're trying to throw at me, Satan. Yeah, you know I, I know mean? that's right. And that's what I got to do sometimes because, you know, he'll he'll try to attack when you're vulnerable. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, you know, I still get attacked just because I'm saved and, and not a drug addict any longer. Like, I still get attacked with other things, you know, mm -hmm. with a sober life and, and a, a normal functioning life, which I've longed for for many years, you know. Like, mm -hmm. there comes a whole new set of problems and issues. Yeah. But nothing that's too hard for him, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, and, you know, just to continue on a little bit about my story, like, I I basically, um, you know, from Fort Hood, I, I had about six military charges and three civilian charges pending during these mm -hmm. next couple years I was stationed there. You know, and even in backsliding, severe depression, hopelessness, you know, losing my career, facing time, mm -hmm. the Lord saw fit to bless me with my soulmate, who That's at that awesome. time was <laughs> my partner in crime, really. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> I caught a felony um, in Texas, because Texas does not play, and... Um, yeah, you know, I did 52 days in county, and that's where my biblical knowledge began. So, like, uh, you know, I started learning about the Word and reading the Word and just finding true peace in a in a bad situation, you know. Like, I felt free on the inside, so to speak, even though I was, um, you know, bound by the jail mm -hmm. and had nobody over there in Texas except for my, my husband, who was my then-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, but he stuck through me, you know, through homelessness, incarceration, addiction, and all that. And, you know, um, when I did get out, we went to Florida, came home, because, you know, we didn't have anybody anywhere to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was supposed to stay there and be on probation and stuff. So technically, you know, I fled and I was a, well, I was a fugitive, basically. Yeah. That's what they called me. Um, you know, they called me a lot of different things. Fugitive, cokehead, whore. I mean, you know, I was labeled everything you can think of that the wow. devil, you know, sits here and torments people with today, right now, you know, who are out there in addiction and things like that. You know, like, he he torments people with words like that and labels like that. 
you know, and lies to people like you'll never get through this. You'll never get past it. Oh, this. yeah. Yes, that's this right. This is who you are. And I mm. believe that. You know what I mean? Yes. I exactly. truly believe that about myself. Like, and I didn't even know that you can, you know, that, I mean, I really didn't know that you can make different choices. I mean, I knew right from wrong, of course. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I just thought that I can't rise above my, my past or who who I thought I was, you know? Mm -hmm. But, so, anyways, long story short, I basically came back here to Florida, and me and my husband, we had our firstborn daughter. Oh, okay. And, yeah, she's five now, mm -hmm. and she's just, <laughs> she's getting big and just about to go into kindergarten, and, but, um... You know, when I had her, I had, like, this feeling of, like, lo like just sadness because I knew that my past was going to come back to haunt me mm -hmm. and that eventually it would separate me from her. And that just really haunted me all the time. And so, you know, I got worse in drinking and drugs and stuff like that. And just um, finally, one day, um, they came and got me from mm -hmm. Texas. It mm -hmm. was, like, four years later, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't party really. I mean, I party at the house. You know, I wasn't out there like that anymore with the men or at the club and stuff like that. You know, I was yeah. at home doing the drugs. But still, like, I still wasn't, you know, doing good. We, You know what I mean? Like, not for having a baby and, you know. So he intervened again, and um, I ended up going back to Texas to prison mm -hmm. for a year, mm. and, um, you know, that was the hardest year of my life, but at the same time, it was necessary, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me, you know, God set me down, and in a place that I, I had no choice but to listen, yeah. well, actually, I take that back, even in there, you do have a choice, you know, you can be hanging out with the same people, you can be wishing and waiting to get out and do the same stuff, you know, or you can truly turn your life over to him because he is available behind those prison walls, that's for sure. That's true. Just like Paul, you know, Paul, when he was a prisoner, you know, he, he boasted in his chains, you know, like, in his word, in God's word, it says, you know, if you are taken from your family, from your homes, from your from your loved ones, from everything. But if you make it for his name's sake, oh, of course, there will be persecutions. But if if you make it for his name's sake, he will restore you 100-fold. You know, that's a promise. And I stuck by that promise. Like, I, I you know, was just like, Lord, I'm going to make this for your name's sake. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he revealed himself the first night I was in there um, when I read Deuteronomy chapter 30. And he charged me to turn to him with all my heart and all my soul and to choose life. Yeah. You know, choose life. And just something as simple as that, choose life, is what really spoke to me and was like, you know, I have a choice here. Yeah. And, um... Uh, he, you know, I was whispering behind the walls to offenders. Um, uh, you know, I I did struggle with something the whole time, though, that I was in there, and I prayed about it all the time, about a stronghold that I felt like, you know, I did want to turn to him with all my heart and soul, but I just felt like, how will I be able to give up fornication? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, not with multiple people, but just you know, my child's father, the love of my life, you know, I just felt like, how am I not going to do something with him whenever I get out, you know, like, it was just like, Lord, I want to live for you, but I, I just don't think I can give that up, you know, and I didn't know if he would be ready for marriage or whatever, but finally, when I resolved in my heart that, um, you know, whatever it takes, you know, Lord, take him away if he's going to hinder me in my walk with you. You know, God, you know, I just prayed these prayers like, Lord, you know, whatever it takes, like, I want to serve you. And so 
just the way he arranged things. Like, when I got out, he made it to where I didn't even have to make that choice. Like, we were married before we even had the opportunity to do anything. <laughs> and that's a whole other story. But, I mean, it's just amazing how he'll do that. We'll sit here and worry about things and plan, try to plan things. And, and really, he's got a handle on it, you know. And so... Since then, you know, we've had another child, a son, so we have our daughter and our son, and, you know, we're doing really well. My husband's in school. I'm working. He's working. We're just, you know, raising our kids. You know, we struggle with different things, but, um, you know, I keep praying, and I just have faith that God is going to work it out, and, you know, um, I just really see him using both of us in ministry and writing for the Lord from, you know, I have a talent to write and I just, you know, I've, since then I've been, um, actually marrying people. Yeah. Um, I'm an ordained minister. One hey, of my man, coworkers, awesome. <laughs> one of my coworkers, you know, said to me one day, you know, you're the only one I know with a relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. or, or something along those lines. Like you, you know, Jesus the most. So, um, you know, if I get you ordained, will you marry me? And then it was like a chain reaction. Like, I I've, I did four weddings last year. I got one this weekend that sprung up on me last minute. But, hey, I'm already halfway ready for it. And, um, you know, that's part of the ministry I feel like he's calling me to do. And, um, I mean, he's really using me, you know. He's just using me at church, using me in my community and, and at work and just, you know, just ministering to people. He's written on the tablet of my heart, his word, and, you know, anytime I need it for spiritual warfare, it mm -hmm. comes to me, and, you know, I use it as a sword of the spirit and defeat that devil who is always trying to get in any way he can. That's awesome. <laughs> you know? Yes. But, I mean, he's definitely redeemed me, definitely um, restored me delivered me I mean everything you hear about like I'm a walk-in living testimony and um you know a lot of people around here who mm -hmm. see that they have to know that it's God because they've seen me make my own attempts at it throughout the years you know say I'm done with this I'm done with that on my own willpower or you know I quit doing this but I'm still doing that Yes. You know, but yet always fall back down to rock bottom and, and mm -hmm. then always bounce back, but always in my own strength. So it yes. never lasted, mm -hmm. you know, but this time, you know, since, since God has really just done a work in me when I was in yeah. prison, like I, mm -hmm. I was in, I was in uh like Bible boot camp is what I call it. Every time the church was open, I was in it. I was always in my word. I would always have offenders coming up to me with real-life situations, mm -hmm. you know, asking for prayer, asking for what the word says, and just, you know, and still to this day, you know, it just seems like I attract people who have real-life situations that they need prayer for, or they need, you know, to know what the word says about it, or, you know, just an encouraging word. And, and if that's how God is using me right now, while well, kids and you know then then that's what it is and sometimes yeah. the devil will try to make you feel like you're not doing enough or you should be yeah. doing something else mm -hmm. but i'm not trying to do this thing prematurely I, i'm let prepare me and I, all i know is i'm just willing and i'm sold out and i don't care if people look at me crazy around here yeah but i do know that um i'm gonna keep on keeping on fighting a good fight amen <laughs> Hey, man, that's I know sure. that part. Yeah. I mean, I'm smiling from ear to ear right now with joy, <laughs> like real joy. That's awesome. You know? Like, wow. He's just awesome, I'm telling you. Like, yes, he oh. is. I'm, you know, I'm so glad about that page because I've met many great brothers and sisters off that page, and, and we all still um, have connection. You know what I'm saying? And, and the same thing goes for you. It's not going to end here, you know, where after mm -hmm. tonight. We don't speak or, you know, uh, uh, or have fellowship. You know, we definitely will continue to talk and, and have fellowship, you know. And it was so funny earlier because you was like, you know, I know, uh, you know uh, more about me and I don't know you. <laughs> and I just went over to just spill the beans of everything right. <laughs> that I could think of. 
but it was it's, it was funny to me because I was like, wow, you know, it's awesome when we can connect with people around the world that really loves the Lord and that is sold out and has a great sense of humor and loves to, you know, talk and, and fellowship and we have laughs. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because you got some people just have uppity attitudes, you know, and, oh, yeah. and they call themselves Christians. And it's like, hey, you need to go back where you started and get it right. You know what I'm saying? All over again. You know, get your oh, attitude yeah. right. And so I just mm-hmm. thank God for you. This is a powerful testimony. And like I said, when I went on to the page, you know, your testimony and a few of it was just like a neon light that shined. And I said, oh, I have to get with this sister to to get on the radio, and I just inboxed you, and the next thing I know, here we are now. You know, yep. and it's awesome. It's and awesome. And then to be playing uh, uh, Davido's music also, yes. like, that's such a blessing to me. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> to see where we came from and, you know, where we're at now. And I promise you, it's like a movement. It really is. And I feel like real uh, modern-day Christians, young people, we need, I mean, not to discredit, you know, yeah. Okay, y'all. I think the time was up here. Um, I remember she was saying something about she was having problems with her phone, and I think that's what happened. Uh, she disconnected uh, from us. So, um, in saying that, um, I really don't know what else to say but that we just thank the Lord because she told me that it has been a busy day for her and that she didn't know how long she was going to have before her phone actually went out. I'm not sure, but we can see if we can get her back. Uh, If we can get just a little music, uh, that would be good. Um, uh, Whatever we can get, we're not going to hear prophecy till we go off, but I'm going to see if I can uh, click over and get her back on with us. So we can have her have the finishing remarks before we go off with our last song. So we can get a little music right now. That'll be great. And then when we come back, I can just uh, let us let you all know that we're back. So we're going to go to some music. I don't know what happened. All right, we're back. We are back. We just thank the Lord for our sister. We got her back on. God bless you, sister. Uh, we didn't get a I'm sorry about that. I must have well. Oh, no, that's okay. I explained, I explained to them that I really didn't know. Um, I, I, I explained to them that I really did not know um, how we was going to... Uh, you know, something was wrong with your phone, you were saying earlier, and so you didn't know mm-hmm. how much time you would have. So I did explain that. But then when I saw oh, you okay. uh, coming back on to the other line, I, we went to some music right quick to, until we got you back. So that's great. Okay. Now, you were saying something before we clicked off. I know we have, like, um, a little less than 10 minutes before we go off with our, our, our last song for tonight. But we wanted I wanted to go ahead and let you finish up what you were saying before. Oh, we, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what I was saying is basically like, you know, we all need to bind together and, uh, you know, the young Christians, not to discredit the elders or anything like that. But, you know, this this day and age, this world, we, you know, with how strong the influence is through hip hop and, and um, mm-hmm. you know, television and music and everything like that, like, it's got a strong demonic influence through it. And we as Christians need to just bind together and make a movement out of, out of you know, spreading the gospel. And I just, <laughs> it's funny because I actually watched that movie um, straight out of Compton. And, and afterwards, like my husband, because he, um, he has a passion for uh, making music, you know, producing beats. And, um, you know, and, and of course we know Dave Vito who, who does his music thing too, but now for mm-hmm. the Lord, which is so awesome, yeah. you know, and we were just, I was just, I had a vision, like, you know, if we can all just bind together and, and, you know, we can make it like, I don't want to say famous because, you know, but I'm talking.
Okay, I guess. Um, I guess we done lost again. <laughs> um, but in actuality, we just want to say because um, I don't know what happened, but I guess we lost in the end. But we're gonna definitely have her um back on with us soon. Um, I know she gave the the biggest part of the testimony, and I know she was wrapping it up in the end, but I guess the phone went back out again, but uh, we we didn't get a chance to get her. But I just want to say this, and I'll speak on her behalf as well, that we just thank the Lord for change. Uh, we thank the Lord for purpose and a destiny, and that even through our mess, um, back in the day in our past, we all came from something, something that we have done that God, you know what I'm saying, is now receiving all the praise and the honor and the glory because our lives have been transformed. And so we just thank God for our sister being on with us on tonight, sharing her powerful testimony, how God just did a great transformation. And I always call our testimonies from being a, a hot mess to a blessing. You know what I'm saying? A hot mess to to, to being uh, 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 not only just a blessing to people, but to be in a, a, a great testimony, a walking testimony that others, you know what I'm saying, will know that there is change, that there is hope. And it doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what streets you have walked. It doesn't matter how many poles you have slid up and down in the, in the clubs. It doesn't matter how much dope that you have sold. It doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying, uh, how much weed or how much drink that you have encountered. You know, what matters is when you totally want to change and you have that mind to change and you give it over to God and you let the Lord know that here I am. I'm as filthy rags, but I am I'm giving my life to you. And so just thank the Lord. We just thank the Lord. And so um, we just thank the Lord. But, um, we thank God for his many, many blessings and for how he is steady yet uh, moving by his spirit. And we thank the Lord once again for our sister Tyra uh, being on tonight and sharing a, a, a powerful testimony. We will have a link, a Ustream link posted up very soon where those of you that came in on the middle part, maybe the end part, maybe some of you, some people haven't been able to hear it and wants to hear it now uh, once we get off the broadcast as soon as our uh, DJ, uh, you know, post it up, then I will uh, repost and, and we can tag you in and go on from there. But like I said, it doesn't stop there. We look forward to having our sister back on with us. Uh, you heard a great, powerful testimony. I, I really felt kind of bad that the phone, uh, you know, had dropped or whatever, and we wasn't able to get her back on, you know, um, to, to say the last remarks. But I think uh, uh, she about really said it, you know, how God, what he's done for her and how he's changed her. And like I said, we look forward to her and not only her, but even others that you heard from that great page. Tell us your testimony. We look forward to everybody uh, that we had on in the past. will be back on to give us an update on what God is doing in their life. So in saying that, we want you all to tune in on Thursdays. Uh, Thursday, this Thursday, we have a great brother. I'm telling you, another brother, a powerful testimony all the way in Canton, Ohio. He will be calling in and sharing uh, a powerful testimony and also some great music from his new EP called Way Up. And we thank God for our brother Pro Prodigal uh, Son. So links will be posted. We look forward to y'all uh, listening in from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we want y'all to always remember, don't live good to die bad, but live good to die great in Christ Jesus. It's been a great night of testimony. God bless you all. Taking us off is our brother Prophecy and the song Father. Have a blessed night, you all. Yeah. Prophecy. I like this. Check. God's power is unmatched. Unmatched. Unmatched.
forgiven for my past. My future is looking bright. Now my present is unwrapped. Unwrapped. The gift of the Holy Spirit the Lord has given. He saw my potential was untapped. Untapped. Salvation in the book of Acts If this were a letter then it be written in all caps My savior is all that When you stand on his word the devil will fall back My sins I'm off that If heaven is my train of thought I can never be off track I'm hoping you bear witness I be about my father's business Spitting these verses before Facebook had an app I spit holy fire to be exact Satan couldn't hold a candle to it, I'm putting it on wax No rest for the wicked and holiness, I'm relaxed Turned away from my sin, but demons want me to relapse You know the deal, I'm only keeping it real If it's according to your will, I receive it cause I ask Thank you, Father No chorus for this I just wanna say thank you, Father Yeah Thank you, Father I just want to say thank you, Father. Yo. I don't know everything, but I know enough not to leave you. The ones who deny you don't even know that they need you. Brethren, I beseech you, false prophets to see through. They got their hands out, but they never trying to reach you. It's only lies that they teach you to mislead you. The ones who don't want holiness are the ones that they preach to. I'm only speaking for Patrick. It's shocking how truth rub people the wrong way and they cling to the static. I love it that your love is automatic And your mercies are renewed every morning It got me flabbergasted Understand it, this is more than rapping In the race, Satan try to slow you down Like, like rush hour traffic We fall victim to our old habits If it ain't about you, it's a distraction There was a time we were damaged But you gave us the Holy Ghost And we use it to our advantage Thank you, Father No chorus for this I just wanna say thank you, Father yeah. I just want to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now let that be right. Yeah.